¿Qué tal amigos de Cantodea Producciones? Yo soy Diego Giro Maginen y el día de hoy estoy platicando con una persona muy especial. Él, se trata de René Ruten, de la banda The Gathering, que va a estar el 16 de septiembre en León, Guanajuato, en Madeiras Terraza. René, how are you? How are you doing? I'm really okay. I'm absolutely happy that we can play again after uh, the, all the lockdowns and all the shit we had with uh, the COVID. So I'm really, really happy that we at last now we can come all so all the way over to uh, Mexico and even uh, yeah the whole South America tour. So yeah, perfect. That's very exciting. We're also really happy to finally have some some shows with you guys and talking about the whole situation of the pandemic. Uh, I read that Beautiful Distortion, your new album, the artwork and the title of the album reflects the situation that happened recently with the world. But I'm really curious, why is that? And do any of the songs also reflect uh, the recent situation that we've been through? Um, not directly uh, one uh, particular song, um, but the main title is just a uh, beautiful distortion. It, it's more reflection. Everybody knows distortion as an effect pedal, like, you know, to, to break up a guitar sound or something or a bass guitar. Well, that's not only distortion. A distortion is also something that's confusing or troubling a situation. And it's not always negative. You know, and we call that in a way a beautiful moment. For example, if you uh, lose your job, for example, that's not really a nice thing, but it's a big distortion in your whole life. You know, or a relation breaks up, you know, that's a big interruption of what you planned and everything. And it feels also negative. But at the end, when you meet somebody new and that person is way better for you than the other relationship you had, or in a job, you know, that you find a whole new job and that job can also be way more better. That's the beautiful part of some kind of distortion or an underbreaking in your life or in whatever the situation is. And for us with this um, pandemic, uh, um, you know, the whole COVID kind of uh, shit what we had over here and that I was not allowed to go outside, you know, for in the evenings and that kind of situation we had here in Holland. Um, well, that is something really negative, but also it forced me to play guitar <laughs> on moments that I never do. And then you come up with another kind of ideas musically that you never would have done because of this situation. And that is also a beautiful moment, what happens. So that's more the reflection of beautiful distortion. But also, yeah, what happens in your life and everything that can be something negative reform it into something really beautiful that is absolutely true that is absolutely true it, it it always like something happens and it throws you in another direction that can be more positive i think that's a great great message that uh you're giving us here and speaking about playing guitar at times that you weren't used to playing guitar i'm also really curious how did you deal uh with the pandemic yourself and what does it feel like for you to finally be able to get back on the road um, well, that you, um, yeah, as, as a musician for 30 years, uh, we always played a lot, you know, before. Um, and the whole idea was, yeah, we had some kind of break. Huh? We had some kind of relaxed moments in our life because, yeah, in 30 years doing almost not the same, but, you know, playing live, writing music, recording the music and release it. That kind of situation we had like, um, okay, something has to be also changed there. So it was more like, okay, we take it easy. You know, especially with uh, band members who got children, uh, so they didn't have much time for um, uh, focusing on the music. So that was more like, okay, we take it a bit more easy and that's a bit better for ourselves. But meantime, in the, in the pandemic, I was working on, um, 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 building my own distortion pedals. Again, you have the word distortion there, but now I was really into this kind of sound. So the whole situation of, or the whole sound of the guitars and the bass guitar, what you hear, and even the second song uh, that when we fall uh, starts with a broken, distorted uh, drum beat, 
Well, that's all through my own uh, distortion pedals I made. And we used a lot in the, in the studio. So that for me was something, yeah, also a beautiful moment that I had time to do again what I love to do, and that's working on electronics. That's awesome. Any, any clues as to what kind of pedals did you use? I'm really curious about that. Uh, I built uh, distortions, uh, overdrives, fusses, um, a lot of fuss, uh, different fuss kind of style of pedals. And I like to figure out how it works, you know, especially old pedals. And funny enough, I find this kind of schematics on the internet. And most are from the 60s, 70s, beginning 80s. And I start rebuilding them if I can find the little parts in it, because most of them, they don't make it anymore so i have to figure out by schematics what i had need to use and i just um, change a bit like i, t I give it more a, a, a flip or a taste uh that the sound more like how i like to hear it how it is so um yeah that is something really fantastic that i find an old kind of japanese kind of schematic and I build it and I make it myself. And um, yeah, you have your kind of unique distortion sounds. And um, yeah, we're going to use it. And we used it in the studio. So that, that was a beautiful moment as well that you, you know, it, it, it works. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I don't think there are many musicians who can say that they've been able to build their own pedal and then use it in the studio for, for their new album. So kudos to you. I mean, not right. not anybody can build a pedal absolutely not really exciting to hear about and something that's also really exciting for the fans is that you're coming back to mexico now this is not the gathering's first time in mexico however it is your first time in leon guanajuato so you're still breaking barriers you're still doing new stuff and i want to know what are your expectations for this tour in mexico and for the rest of the tour in latin america expectations you have to be careful with that you know there's COVID is still there huh? we still have problems uh, the airports here are packed full you know with people now who wants to go on holidays eh? it's, it's summer here it's very, very warm so everybody wants to go traveling through all Europe uh, it's it's crazy at the airport here the biggest one we have here in Amsterdam it's it's great they say they say already like don't come with a car go by train and come very early because it's hectic. And I hope that COVID, because this just only because of people, you know, stopped working over there. There was no job. They found another job and now they need people to work at the airport. That's the problem now. Um, but uh, when we leave here to Mexico and South America, um, yeah, uh, the autumn starts here again. So I'm afraid that COVID will rise again here and the infections and they i hope not but maybe they do restrictions again and then we have a big problem so i'm also a bit nervous in this way of is it possible for us that we can go you know and how do we go and what do we need do, eh, do we need uh, another kind of vaccinations and that kind of stuff and the rules and uh, is it good for us to travel by airplane and if one of us get infected, well, the whole band will be infected because we are very close and traveling and sitting in the same little van and bus and everything. So it's a bit scary as well, but it's also something we love to do, you know? And um, that's why we are very excited as well to go to Mexico again after how long years, 10 years ago that we've been there for the last time? I think so. so I think it has been. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, we can't wait, we can't wait, and we always love it, you know, and we played in, in the past many, many times in Mexico City, you know, and if we have time, we travel to the pyramids, we love to see it over there. Yeah, and now we have uh, another club, uh, and another show, another city we've never been to uh, in Leon. So, uh, okay. yeah, you know, it would be fantastic, all the shows, but not even only in Mexico, you know, it's just... We are so happy that we can we can do it again and that we can play live again and uh, yeah and I hope nothing comes in between with this stupid stupid uh, illness sickness what is it infections what we can have and uh, yeah or it will be a mild one that that's what I'm hoping for more like you know that it just disappears as a just normal or normal just a soft gripe. 
Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> we we also hope that it, that it becomes like one of the other illnesses we can normally get. And with vaccinations, I mean, people I hope are getting vaccinated because if they're not, then that's a big problem. But yeah, let's uh, let's hope so. Let's hope so because yeah. uh, this tour has already been postponed twice. I think is that correct? Yeah, twice and other shows because we should go also to Russia. Uh, that was also postponed two times. But now because of the war, we said uh, we can't go over there. We will not do it. Um, so that was even totally cancelled. But that was then the third time. And I don't think we go there in the next five to ten years. So Going back into the idea of coming into Mexico, do you have any really good memories that of something that you saw here or something that you might have tasted here? Like what what do you like about Mexico? Mexican fans would really love to know. What I like about Mexico is, is the people. Absolutely the people. And um, I noticed the first time uh, we went over there, and I still remember, uh, it was on my birthday, so you don't forget it. And okay. it was a long time ago. And I remember that and we tra traveled through New York and then uh, we went to Mexico City and we were really tired. And all the people who helped us, you know, working with us, eh, the sound guys and from the company who they were so friendly and the humor, it's like the humor I, I like the most, you know, not just making jokes about each other and that kind of stuff. And, you know, it's another kind of humor than North America, but I, I, I love it I, way more, way more is my kind of humor. It's almost like English humor, but then a bit more with an edge on it. And that I never forget. And um, yeah, that's what I like the most about Mexico City, just the people and the talking and yeah, especially the humor. And then, of course, you know, the lucky we are as um, musicians who can travel. Uh, you, every country has kind of thing with food and all the specialties. Yeah, and then Mexico, Mexican food is, is just fantastic, you know. There are even in the city where I live here in Nijmegen, there's uh, some uh, uh, Mexican restaurants and it's always fantastic to go over there, you know. Only in Mexico City, it's totally different, the food with mm -hmm. all the spices and, and the very hot food. That is the thing that we have to be careful with what we eat because you put peppers in everything, even in the breakfast. So, yeah, and I can handle a bit of spicy, but sometimes this is a bit too crazy. But uh, you got to be careful with those spices, though. If a Mexican tells you that a spice is not hot, it means it's hot, really hot. <laughs> it's beyond my my what I can handle hot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I know. pretty much. I, I know. I know. I Yeah, <laughs> I had the moment. <laughs> Oh man, so uh, it's really uh, a pleasure to talk to you, Rene. And I have a couple of questions uh, before we leave. I have a couple of questions from your fan community here in Mexico. They've asked me to, uh, well, I made a poll and I asked them to vote on what kind of questions they'd like me to ask you. So the top voted questions are the following two. The first one is everyone would like to know, what is your warm up routine before a concert? Well, I know a few band members really need to brush their teeth just before they go on stage, just to have this kind of clean up feeling uh, to get on stage. Uh, I have to go to the toilet. I have to do uh, number two, always uh, half an hour before the show. Otherwise, I really don't play good. That's, that's, a, that's a true thing. That's my routine to go to the toilet. And everybody has his own things, you know, rituals, you know, that you have to to, uh, to dress up, you know, not that we are like uh, very with weird clothes or something, eh, you know, it's just that you change your shoes, your jeans and the t-shirt and everything. And we just have uh, a talk, humor, and, and we can see that we are like getting, it's not being nervous, but it's just getting more the concentrated. And you get really tired as well. It's just because your body knows that you have to perform for one half, almost two hours, something like that. So you get this kind of tiredness feeling. Some people, uh, uh, the Hans, the drummer, he needs to lay down, uh, close his eyes a bit. So, you know, everybody has his own kind of routine, but I think that's every band has a bit, this kind of, yeah, kind of thing is just before the show. Um, yeah. And, um, our keyboard player, we, we, we go with another keyboard player and he needs a whiskey in front of the, before the show. 
He's the only one who drank alcohol before the show, so he needs whiskey. That's his routine. Just have a glass of whiskey just to get this kind of relax uh, feeling in him. And, uh, you know, a bit of the routines we have. Nothing weird, nothing special mm. or, you know, and, and if I have, and I've, I got too nervous, you know, I, I start running something like up the stairs, up down the stairs, like five times to get a bit of tiredness and this kind of, yeah, you know, releasing this kind of energy before you go on stage. And half an hour before you have to go on, on stage, no food, because that's really bad, you know, eat and then go on stage. It's, it's terrible, we don't do that. But sometimes the situation is like that. Yeah, then, yeah. So we like to eat way before, right? three hours before the show. And yeah, and if the sound check is good, you have a good monitor system and everything works well. And uh, yeah, we have a better feeling and then uh, we hope we make a fantastic show. Yeah. Awesome, thanks so much. And I'm pretty sure that you're gonna have a great show here in, in Mexico and especially in León, Guanajuato. And the final question that the fans have for you is they'd like to know, what are your hobbies? We already heard uh, about uh, making pedals and electronics, but what other hobbies do you like uh, to do uh, in your spare time? In my spare time, yeah, well, this, this kind of hobby, well, music is also still a hobby. Mm -hmm. So I'm always busy with music, writing music. Um, you know, I also play uh, in another band, Habitants, eh, together with my wife. Uh, okay. end, of, end of August, we go into the studio with that band. So just before we go uh, uh, on tour. So that, that's what I'm doing now. And I'm always playing and working on sounds and um, discovering kind of new, other kind of music. So I'm a lot behind the computer, too, way too much behind the computer, just kind of doing this stuff. Um, but also I have to walk. I, and you know, I do nothing on sports and I really have to do that. So I got for my birthday, it was two days ago, I got a bike. Happy birthday! My wife. Yeah, thank you. But I got a new bike. So now I have to start biking in the Netherlands. Well, that you know, everybody bikes here in the Netherlands. So that's what I have to do more. So do a bit of, of kind of exercising and being outside. Um, yeah, I, I help a lot also as a producer, you know, I help uh, other musicians with mixing and doing some mastering uh, projects, jobbies. But that's still music, you know, so that's, it consumes a lot of time. So, and the electronics, yeah, before I finish something, uh, yeah, it takes a lot of time to, to discover and work on it. So, uh, yeah, that consumes way too much time. Uh, till deep in the night, I'm busy with this. Uh, that my wife says like, okay, now it stops. Now you have to go to bed. <laughs> Because, uh, yeah, so that kind of stuff, uh, some reading, I don't know, boring stuff as well, so... Into Stranger Things or not really? Because that's been a Ab big thing here. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, Stranger Things and you have uh, another kind of, um, that's called Dark, it's from Germany. That's oh. also fantastic, yeah. I've seen it, it's so good, it's so good. It's and I'm also into Star Wars, I'm a nerd, you know, so I'm <laughs> <laughs> so those spin-offs are also fantastic to watch. And uh, so I have HBO, I have uh, Disney Plus, um, I have of course Netflix and in Holland. Yeah, now it's beautiful weather today, but we have a lot of rain, so we have a lot of time to do things inside the house. Awesome, awesome. Well, Renee, thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure talking to you, and it's also a, a pleasure to hear that you're also into Star Wars, like a lot of us surely are. And well, we're looking forward to seeing you here on the 16th of September in León, Guanajuato, in Terraza Madeiras. Y a todos los que nos están escuchando, muchísimas gracias por eh, venir a escucharnos. Y nuevamente pueden conseguir los boletos en www.cantodeaproducciones.com y nos estaremos viendo muy pronto. Thank you so much, Renee. De nada. I'm